One Easter Sunday, uh, Reverend Jones announced to his congregation, he said, my good people, I have here in my hands three sermons. A $100 sermon that lasts for five minutes, a $50 sermon that lasts for 15 minutes, and a $20 sermon that lasts for a full hour. Now we'll take the collection and see which one I'll deliver. (laughs) Young Ernie and his family were invited to have Easter Sunday lunch at grandmother's house. Everyone was seated around the table as the food was being served. And when Ernie received his plate, he started eating right away. Well, Ernie uh, knew he shouldn't do that, but he still started anyhow. And uh, all of a sudden, his father said, Ernie, wait until we say grace. I don't have to, said the five-year-old. Of course you do, Ernst, his mother insisted rather forcefully. We always say a prayer before eating at our house. That's our house. Ernie explained, but this is grandma's house, and she knows how to cook. (laughs) I hope you're going to grandma's house today. No. (laughs) We've been in a series called I Give Up over the past several weeks, and again, usually when you hear the phrase, I give up, it's somebody who's in a desperate situation. Life's not going well, they're frustrated maybe with the kids trying to clean the house and five minutes later it's trashed again and they say, I give up. So usually again when we hear the phrase, I give up, it's a negative thing. In this series we've been learning how the phrase, I give up, can be very positive, especially as we look at the life of Jesus and how he modeled for us the I give up lifestyle. In fact, in Matthew chapter 26, verse 39, This is just prior to the crucifixion. Jesus knows what's coming, and he's going through the agony of what's about to take place, and he's in prayer, and it says, going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, my father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Again, that's the whole, I give up. I give up my will. Jesus was surrendering his will to the Father, saying, Father, I give up. Today, Easter Sunday, or Resurrection Sunday, we'll be talking about how Jesus gave up death. I give up death. You've maybe never heard an expression like that before. Most of us have been affected in very painful ways by somebody's death. A close friend, a close family member, and we know the pain of that. You can read that that says death. Some of the teens know what it says because it's a drawing by Eric Samuel Timms, and you'll see a little later what it says when it's flipped upside down. Death seems so final, so permanent. Our life is never the same when someone we love dies. Now the disciples are horrified at the crucifixion of Jesus. Here's the one they had devoted their life to for three years now, following him and going through a lot with him, and now he was dead, and they were horrified. They scattered in fear. They began to mourn deeply. What do you think of when you hear something being advertised as a surefire deal or as being 100% guaranteed to work? No doubt most of us have learned the wisdom of the adage that If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. But God offers something that is as good or better than it sounds. Victory over death through his son, Jesus Christ. Giving up death, Jesus rising on Easter morning was more than a showy miracle to shock and awe his followers or even his attackers. When Jesus rose, he turned the entire order of the universe on its head. The resurrection shows us that death does not have the last word. God has the last word, and that word is life. Flipped around, now death says life. Very same drawing, 
But when it said death before, now turned upside down, it says life. And that's exactly what Jesus Christ came to do. Suffering and death end, but God's kingdom lasts forever. Let's go and read Acts chapter 10, verse 34. Peter's talking here, and he's sharing a little bit about what we are celebrating here today. It says, then Peter began to speak. We are witnesses of everything he, referring to Jesus, did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. I was recently reading an, reading an article by Billy Graham who says, Christ has risen from the dead, and because he lives, we who know him shall live also. In the resurrection, Jesus Christ conquered sin and death and is alive forevermore. Friends, we worship a risen Savior, a living Savior, who has promised to give immortality to everyone who believes on his name. In fact, Jesus promised in Luke chapter, or John chapter 11, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Now, Jesus isn't just talking the physical. We know the Bible also says it's appointed unto man once to die. But he's talking about that death of the body. That's not the last word. Because he rose again, we are created to live forever in eternity with him. A long time ago, there's a guy named Job. Job went through a lot of, lot of things. In fact, he might have been tempted to say, I give up. Everything was taken from him, all of his animals, his, his kids, everything. And Job said at one point, he said, if mortals die, can they live again? If mortals die, can they live again? See, we expect death, but we always hold on to this glimmer of hope that medical science will discover something that is going to help me live a lot longer. And we certainly know that in our society today, people are living longer because of great breakthroughs that have taken place. Yet death carries with it a certain dread. From the day that Abel was killed, people have dreaded death. It's been the enemy, the great mysterious monster that makes people quake with fear. And the Bible always talks about sin and death together. In fact, it says in 1 Corinthians 15, the sting of death is sin. And then in Romans 5, through one, though, through one man sin entered the world, referring back to Adam, and death through sin, and thus death, death spread to all men because it says all sinned. Death stalks the rich and the poor, doesn't matter, the educated and the uneducated. Death is no respecter of race, color, or creed, and we never know the moment of death. For us. And so some would say, well, is there any hope? If we all know we're going to die, is there any hope? Is there a possibility of immortality? Well, I take you today to the empty tomb in the garden of Joseph of Arimathea, where some had gone to anoint the body of the crucified Christ. And when they got there, they had been startled to find that the tomb was empty. Several years ago in my neighborhood, well, we, we as kids loved to like camp outside all the time. We had a pop-up camper, but sometimes we didn't always use that. Sometimes we would pitch a tent out in the backyard, or sometimes we would use the clothesline that was in the backyard. And we would take a couple blankets, and we would hang them over the clothesline, put some bricks on the edge of them so they would stay there, and that's what we would tent in. Anybody ever do that before? All right. Great. How many 30 and under have ever done that? 
Okay, there are a few of you that have 30, Rob, 30 and under, really? <laughs> One night we were doing this, and there was, my brother was out there, a few of his friends, some of my friends, and it's getting a little bit late, and we're getting hungry. And we're thinking, you know, we, we got to find something to eat here. And so, well, let's just go inside. We'll grab a bag of chips or something. We'll find something inside. So we walked inside my house, and all of a sudden, the smell of pizza rolls was filling the house. Oh, man, this is perfect. Pizza rolls. How perfect. Mom is so thoughtful that she would make us pizza rolls. And so we got on the, 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 the mitts, and we opened up the oven, and we grabbed the pizza rolls out. We stuck them in a bowl, and we headed outside to go camping with pizza rolls. This was awesome. A few minutes later, after we had left the house with the pizza rolls that mom had made for us, my mom comes into the kitchen thinking, oh, pizza rolls must be done by now. She was so excited to have pizza rolls, anticipating with that smell and the taste that, oh, this is going to be awesome, I'm going to have pizza rolls. So she puts on the mitts, and she grabs the oven door and opens up the oven door, and it's empty. <laughs> and she's like, what happened? I, I know I put pizza rolls in here. I'm pretty sure I did. Am I losing my mind? Did I just heat it? No, I didn't just heat it up. I smell pizza rolls. And she's thinking she's losing her mind. She's wondering, what happened to the pizza rolls why is the oven empty? It shouldn't be empty, but it is. The people that gathered at the tomb that day were surprised like my mom was. It wasn't the oven that was empty that day. It was the tomb. And that they went, where'd he go? What happened? What's going on? I know they placed him in here, but he is gone. He has risen. My mom still talks about the pizza rolls to this day, by the way. <laughs> The greatest news the mortal ear has ever heard is the news that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead as he promised. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is chief proof of the Christian faith. It is the truth that lies at the very foundation of the gospel. Other doctrines of the Christian faith are very, very important, but the resurrection is essential. You see, without it, we would have no faith to believe in. Jesus' death, it would have been ended. There would be nothing for us to hope for at all. There would be no personal salvation because the enemy would have won. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, if we confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. You see, in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have the answer to the great question of the ages. If mortals die, can they live again? The Bible teaches that because Christ lives, we also shall live. The greatest truth that you can ever hear is that Jesus Christ died but rose again and that you too will die, but you will rise again in newness of life if you are a follower of Jesus Christ. We know the Bible teaches in the bodily resurrection of Christ, although there are many that would try to force us to believe that it was his spirit only that maybe rose, but we believe his body rose again. Jesus' very body was raised by God from the dead, and someday we will see him. When we come to Jesus Christ, we bring everything to him. This has been our part of our series, I give up. I give up really everything. I give up whatever he needs. I give up my life to him. You see, he wants our possessions, our hearts, our will, everything about us, he wants. He does not want a room in our house. He claims our entire home from attic to cellar. He wants us all because he loves us dearly. He loves every single one of you. 
It doesn't matter what the past has been or what's been involved in that. His blood, the Bible says, covers over a multitude of sins. There's no sin that's outside of the realm of what Christ can cover, of what Christ's blood will erase from our lives. And it's because he's passionately in love with us. And we know that God is holy. We know that he's pure. And in heaven, there can be nothing impure. Well, that presents a problem for many of us, again, because of our sin. Well, that's why Christ came, to forgive us of our sin. And through his resurrection, he makes us holy as we accept what he's done for us. Not only does the resurrection give us hope of immortality, but it also provides life with a capital L here and now. I think Christians ought to be the happiest people ever. The saying in our church is love God, love people, love life. Christians shouldn't be walking around looking like we've been sucking on a lemon all day. Right? Now, I know there's moments, there's seasons of difficulty and hardship, and that we don't have to fake it at those times, but we have Jesus Christ within us. He brings us life because of the resurrection. And it's an amazing thing that actually through the resurrection, Christ actually comes and dwells within each one of us. Amazing. Yes, he's at the right hand of the Father, but he also comes and he lives in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Perhaps you do not know about the power of the resurrected Christ. Maybe you've never knelt at the foot of the cross and had your sins forgiven. On that first Good Friday, Jesus Christ died on the cross in your place. He took your judgment. He took your sin. He took your death. Now, Satan... He thought he had won the victory that day. I mean, he's thinking, this is it. I've won. You ever watched an athletic event when the team is down like big time? You think, oh, there's no way. It is over. It is done. You turn off the TV and you leave. And all of a sudden, an hour later, you get a text or you see on the news, what? They came back and they, how'd they do that? How'd they win? That's impossible. Teams are never done until it's over. Go wild. (laughs) but on that day Satan thought he had won I love this picture I came across here (laughs) I'm with stupid (laughs) I'm with stupid (laughs) the enemy thought he had won but Jesus had a plan all along that the father had put in place a long time ago and everything had gone according to scripture from the Old Testament. Jesus Christ himself fulfilled over 300 prophecies written hundreds of years before, and he fulfilled every single one of those. Scripture teaches in Acts 16, 31, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. John 1, 7, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. On the third day, Jesus was raised from the dead. The fact is a guarantee that the atoning work of Christ on the cross was acceptable to God in your place. And now we simply just need to receive what he's done for us. And God says he will make everything new. Everyone can know the power of the risen Christ. Even as you walk through the difficulties of life, through moments of disappointments and trials, through various circumstances of life, the resurrected Christ is always with you. And the Bible says he will never leave us or forsake us. Man, what a great time today would be for you to give your life to Jesus Christ. For you to accept what he has done for you and he willingly offers it to you today. And he desires to come and actually live within you you. He desires to transform our life. He desires for us not to walk around in confusion or loneliness or discouragement, but he has come to give us life and more abundantly. What an offer for us that we get to exchange all of our sin from the past, everything, and exchange it for salvation through Jesus Christ. He did all the work and he paid all the price. We simply receive what he has done for us. So what do we do? What do we do if this is something we need and we want? Well, first of all, the Bible says we need to renounce our sins. We need to confess our sins to to God. 
Now, he knows all of them, obviously, but, and we don't have to remember them name by name, but say, God, I, I have sinned. Have you ever been driving down the road, and all of a sudden you see an animal, maybe a squirrel, it's, it's coming across the road, and all of a sudden you're like, do I speed up, do I slow down, what do I do here? It's coming across the road, and you think you're going to hit it, and all of a sudden it just boom, turns around and goes back really quick. That's what God's asking us to do. It's called repentance. If that squirrel keeps on coming, it's dead, right? It's run over. But in its, it's, it's got a little wisdom there, and it turns around and goes back to the curb and into the grass where it's safe. At least safe for most of you drivers. Maybe not everybody, but most of you. That's repentance. And Christ says, you're going this direction, and everything's falling apart, and life's not going well, and you're trying to do it all without me. Turn from your sin, confess your sin, and come back to me. Come to me. The second thing, it's by faith that we receive him. It's by faith. I don't have to have it all figured out. I don't have to have the Bible memorized to give my life to God. I still don't have it memorized. I don't have to know all the answers. I have to have faith to believe. Jesus, I believe that you died for me 2,000 years ago. I believe you rose again. I'm giving my life to you. Someday when I die, death is not going to have the final word for me. Death is not going to be the end for me because the Bible says when we get rid of this body, that's when we live. That's when we really come to life. Now, we're created to live for eternity, and God wants your eternity to be with him. But in order for that to happen, we need to surrender our life to God, accept his love and his forgiveness, and begin living for him. I want to read one Short passage of scripture, and then we're going to pray here this morning. 1 Corinthians 15, 55. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He gives us the victory. Today, you are on the winning team. Doesn't it feel good to be on the winning team? We, we've read the book. We know the end of the story, and we win. Amen. This morning, I'd like to invite you to just to bow your heads and close your eyes so that you're not distracted by those around you today. On this Resurrection Sunday of 2017, there's no better day to do this if you haven't ever done this before, and that is giving your life to Christ. This is something I did when I was about 10 years old and on a Sunday night. I wasn't like a terrible kid. I tried to please my parents other than taking pizza rolls, you know, something like that. But, but I recognized I needed Jesus, that without him I'm lost. Some of you sitting here today may be recognizing that. Say, you know what? My life isn't what it should be. It's not on the right course. I may even believe God exists, but I've never really surrendered to him. I've never accepted what Jesus Christ has done for me. Man, today's a great opportunity. Today would be a great day to do that. He conquered death so that we could have life. With your head bowed and your eyes closed, in just a moment I'm going to ask you if you would like to give your heart to Christ just to raise your hand. I'm not going to call you forward today have you stand or anything, but just so I know if there's anyone here that would like to do that so I can lead us all in a prayer, I'm not even asking you to join this church, although I would encourage you to be in a very good Bible preaching church. It helps you in your walk with the Lord to have Christian friends that will encourage you and that you can encourage. But today, if this is the day that you'd like to give your heart to Jesus, right now with every high, eye closed and every head bowed, would you raise up your hand right high, real high for me now? Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Are there others? There's a couple here this morning. Are there some others? Say, today's the day. I want to surrender my life to Christ. I want to live for God. Anyone else today? All right, you may put your hand down. All right, I want to invite everyone, if you would, to pray this prayer with me today. Just repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for loving me and sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for me. I do confess that I have sinned. But I now invite you to come into my heart. 
Forgive me of all my sins. And help me to live a life that's pleasing to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask the musicians if you would begin to come right now. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, or maybe it was even a rededication to the Lord, at the end of the service, or maybe even during this song, I'm going to ask Mike and I to read nice, and they're going to come and meet you over here. They have a little booklet that's a gift we want to give you that's going to help you to, to grow in your faith in God and to know, uh, how can I read the Bible and pray, and how do I do that kind of thing, and how can I get to know God in a better way? So I would invite you, even while we're singing this song, to come over, and they'll meet with you and give you one of those books. So let's all stand this morning as we sing a song we sang earlier. And let's worship God and thank God that he conquered death. And because of that, we today have life and more abundantly. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin. Lost without hope and no place to begin. redeemed, only beauty remains. My orphan heart was given a name. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested and my life began,
Again, thank you for being with us here today to celebrate the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, if you raised your hand, or maybe you didn't raise your hand, but you'd like to accept Christ, again, I'd like to encourage you to come over to Mike and Irene. They won't bite. They're wonderful people. They want a gift they'd like to give you. Also, if you're a guest of ours today, please see the greeters in the back for a gift that we'd like to say thank you for being with us here today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we celebrate your love for us through the sending of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lived a sinless life, who died on the cross for us, and three days later rose again in victory over death, hell, and the grave. Lord, we rejoice in that love for us today. Lord, as we go from this place today, we do not go from your presence, for you will go with us. Lord, help us to share your love with those that we come in contact with today and throughout this week, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, bless you. Have a great Lord's Day today.